We have come upon a place of a long and colorful history. We are in an Israel National Park on the site of ancient Ashkelon, believed among other things to be the birthplace of Herod. The old Crusader Wall, rising just to the east of the park, is a relatively new structure. The city dates back to the millennium BC. In the 12th century BC, the Philistines conquered Ashkelon and completely rebuilt it. The conquest of the coastal areas of the country by the Philistines occurred soon after the Israelites' occupation of the rest of the country, and the struggle between the two peoples lasted many hundreds of years and was a bitter one. Later, Ashkelon flourished under the Greeks and Romans. Herod greatly enlarged and beautified the city. A handful of Jews remained when the city became Christian under Byzantine. It was taken by the Muslims in the year 638 and was so well defended and fortified that the Crusaders did not succeed in conquering it until 1153 when there was still a small Jewish community there. Excavation of the old Ashkelon is fairly recent bringing once again to light the houses of varied dates, old wells, and the remains of statuary and the like. Here stand Greek and Roman statues, columns and capitals, and the court and colonnades of a Herodian building. Well, it's enough to bear the weight of the world on your shoulders, but this is getting a little ridiculous. The caskets of those days past provide quite an artistic history in themselves. The park is in a beautiful landscaped setting of trees and flowers. Ashkelon is located on the Mediterranean coast, about 35 miles south of Tel Aviv, at the edge of the Negev Desert. Some of the finest beaches in the country are found here. This particular beach is called Hof Atikot, or Antiquities Beach. While those look like cannons sticking out of the cliff, Carl Glasser, my guide, tells me that they are not. They are ancient Roman columns brought here by the Crusaders and used to reinforce their harbor fortifications. sparkly Mediterranean is not always so calm, at least from the looks of it here. Carl and I have picked a rather threatening and windy day to visit another site of antiquity. Caesarea was re-founded by Herod the Great, that man does get around, in about 22 BC on a site of an older, smaller settlement and named in honor of Caesar Augustus. In Caesarea, Peter baptized the centurion Cornelius, first Gentile convert. A Jewish revolt was sparked off in Caesarea in 66 AD, and the coins Judea Capta were minted here after their defeat. Caesarea was Rome's chief city in the Palestine region for some 500 years. The Crusader city, together with older Roman and Byzantine remains, constitutes one of Israel's most attractive and important ancient sites. St. Paul was imprisoned here for two years before he was sent to Rome in 65 AD and the bowl, believed to be used in the Last Supper, was carried from here by Crusaders to Genoa, where it is still preserved. Little remains inside the Crusaders' walls except part of the port, rocks of old houses, and the ruins of a 19th century Turkish mosque. Outside, however, 
in a much larger area of the Roman Byzantine Caesarea, there is a rather glaring, re-restored but beautifully situated 2nd century Roman theater excavated on the seashore to the south. A Byzantine street, dating from the 5th to 6th centuries, lies to the east of the main settlement. Here, as at so many excavations, we find those beautifully carved caskets. To the north of Caesarea is this Roman aqueduct. I wasn't so sure as to the need for this, for at this point the weather caught up with us. In the few moments it took to take this picture, I got soaked. Caesarea had an eye out for the fences, as was apparent here in the narrow slit cut into the wall facing the sea. The Mediterranean itself provided for some striking photography in its wild mood as the sun and shadows played on the heaving water, backed by heavy-laden brooding clouds. 